I'm Jessa, a self-taught independent repair technician, and I hold Apple Repair certifications, and I fix thousands of Apple products, but I am not authorized by Apple to repair any of them. Manufacturer authorized repair is another way to say manufacturer controlled repair, but as an unauthorized independent, I'm not controlled by Apple, and therefore I'm not forced to decline repairs that may not make business sense for Apple. I would prefer that you fix your device if it's at all possible, and only buy a new one if you really have to. I don't think Apple likes me and many others like me. I'm banned from the Apple Support Community Forum for going on there and telling people that many common problems with Apple devices are actually repairable. I've been banned and my answers are deleted. The corporate Apple policy is that they will not refer repairs that they don't do to people that are like me in your community even if it means that somebody out there is not gonna be able to get back the data that's trapped on their dead device. But despite corporate culture, there are good people out there and some of them even work for Apple. So I wanna show you in just a minute what happens when somebody at Apple says, you know what, you should go to independent repair and we're able to recover the data. We just did that a, a few days ago for, um, for a local MacBook Air that had somebody's novel that they were writing trapped on site. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like when they come and pick that up. Now, in order for us to, pick, to fix this MacBook, I had to use schematics that fell off a truck in China. Now, a schematic is something that Apple doesn't want me to have, but that's not really intellectual property. A schematic is just a map, just like a city. It shows me how things are connected together on the logic board so that I can see what's supposed to talk to what and what's broken and that I can fix it. It's kind of like looking at a model of a kidney in order to do a surgery, and that's really different than actually building a kidney from scratch and knowing how all the parts functionally connect and talk to each other. The other thing that I needed to do to fix this MacBook is I had to order a chip that it, was, that it needed. Now, that chip I had to order from China and I had to cross my fingers that what I got was actually the chip that I needed. I would have loved to have been able to buy that chip directly from Apple, but they will not sell that chip to me. In fact, one time when I did buy chips from China, $2,000 worth of chips were confiscated at the border because I had them sent packaged with my own screens that were Apple screens that were mine that I had sent to China to be professionally refurbished in the same factories that make the screens to begin with. On their way back to me, they were confiscated by Customs Border Patrol, sent to Apple who said, that's contraband, she can't have it, throw them away. I employ a small team of six stay-at-home moms and one stay-at-home dad, and we fix devices from all over the world and recover data every day, but there's a lot that we can't do, and it's getting worse. And I want you to know about this. This is the big problem with the right to repair. Did you know that I can't change the home button on an iPhone 7 where everything else is working just fine because that home button is software locked to the device and only Apple can repair that software pairing. They can, only Apple can marry the new home button to the device. Same thing if a single drop of water gets into your iPhone 10 and damages your flood illuminator. Nothing else is wrong, I can't fix that for you because that part is encrypted and it's software locked to the rest of your device. In fact, even you can't change your iPhone screen anymore without losing true tone function unless you have a fancy Chinese programmer that can copy the serial number from the old screen to the new. We can't even put a new battery in your iPhone XS without you losing your battery health information function. And all of this is brand new software locks that have been recently instituted by Apple in an attempt to lock down and monopolize and control repair. What we used to be able to do, we can't do anymore. We need your help. <clears throat> We need you to support the right to repair movement. Go to repair.org. <laughs> Go to repair.org and click to talk to your legislator and make your voice heard. Because if you don't, we could very well end up in a world where you can't change the batteries in your own remote control to your TV because the batteries have a serial number that's paired to that TV. Don't let that happen. Say no to software locks on parts. 
go to repair.org. And now let's see, what is it like when somebody who thought there was no way to get their data from their MacBook finds out that because of independent repair, there is a way. Uh -huh. Now, as we look underneath that backlight driver, we do indeed see quite a bit of corrosion under there. It's working! All right, here you go. <gasps> wow. So it was, uh, you know, turned on, ready to go. But yeah, yeah that's so, so good. Um, and then all of the, all of the documents are copied over there so that you don't get back into this trouble. Thank right? you. And I wanted to just ask about how you, how did you, what happened when this first, yes. and then first what? happened? Uh, so uh, we were on vacation. We drove all the way over there, and they uh, said, "Well, we can't do anything." Uh, they sent us to you. Wow! And we were thrilled. Yeah, and I'm we thrilled are too. Thrilled. Yeah, because usually the Apple Store in our experience that they they just tell you, you that's you know, it. Would you like to look at the new MacBooks? You know, right. And then they're right. they haven't been. Uh, I mean, I get it that it doesn't make sense for them to necessarily do repair, right. you know, same as this right now. I don't know that this one doesn't, that the screen itself right. isn't going to fritz out kind of over time. It may right. or may not. And we expect you know. that, but the fact that we got the data back right. yeah. is huge. Yeah, so normally they don't give you any options because yeah. they don't want to get into it at all. Yeah, yeah. So it's really great and I'm thrilled. I wanted to kind of, you know, Thank hear you. like, yeah, that we that's are so happened. They went to the... Yes that the Apple store, local Apple store, said, why don't you go see Jessa? And, and everybody should go see yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> right. so, so, think, so, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. here you go. And, and in fact, I put up an article about you this morning on my Facebook. Oh, and nice. just said thank you to you and your awesome. crew. Yeah. And uh, save Well, there's the a lot of shops, not, you know, not just me, but there's a lot of independent repair shops and, uh, where we advocate and go down to Albany to fight for sort of this right to repair. So there's a bill yeah. in New York oh. State, the Fair Repair Act, okay. which is kind of compelling manufacturers, if passed, to produce parts and information for people like me so that if the manufacturers who they kind of control repair and monopolize okay, it how, so yeah. that you don't really have very many options yeah. and that's kind of like interferes with that's healthy terrible. competition it yes, is terrible that's terrible and especially when uh, there's already the sense that most of our uh, I items are are made to uh, be obsolescent in, right. in you know a couple of years like right yeah, it's in their best interest yes, to, to sell to, stuff to so that's not it, yeah. who you want fixing stuff yeah.